All right, so this is our last video for this uh, test three, and it'll say module six homework four, solving by quadratic formula, not this discriminant. Remember, our quadratic is our x squares that we were talking about. So we solved um, by factoring, we solved by the square root property, and now we're going to solve using a quadratic formula. So three different ways of solving quadratics. This time we're going to do the quadratic formula. Our quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Hopefully a lot of you already know this, but if you don't know this, do make sure you do need to know this for the test. So this will not be provided for you. You need to know for the test. So remember our standard form for a quadratic equation is our ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So a quadratic expression can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c. It asks us to identify the values of a, b, and c in the expression below, which is great because we've been doing this this whole time. So this time, though, we need to put this in the correct order so that way it's an ax squared plus bx plus c. So if we have 9 plus 12x plus 5x squared, I could rewrite this as 5x squared plus 12x plus 9. So now it's in the standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So we can see a in front of x squared is positive 5, b in front of x is positive 12, c out by itself is 9. So again, a is 5, b is 12, c is 9. So the good thing is we've kind of already been doing this. So the next example says solve the quadratic formula. Remember, solve by the quadratic formula. Remember, solve means try to find x equals. The quadratic formula gives you that x equals that you're looking for. So it says 4x squared plus 5x plus 2 equals 0. Thankfully, this is in standard form already for us. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. This is in our standard form. So a in front of x squared is positive 4. b in front of x is positive 5. c out by itself is positive 2. So I'm going to go ahead every time I like to rewrite our quadratic formula so that way it's right next to it. I also say it whenever I write it so that way I'm saying it, I'm seeing it, I'm writing it, I'm doing all these things to help me memorize it. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now it's right here, so I don't want to make a little mistake. So I can just plug in wherever I see an a, plug in 4, wherever I see a b, plug in 5, wherever I see a c, plug in positive 2. So negative b, which is 5, plus or minus the square root of b, which is 5 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 2, all over 2 times a, which is 4. So we have negative 5 plus or minus the square root. I can plug this stuff underneath the square root into my calculator. I can't plug in the square root because it'll give me an ugly decimal, but I can plug this stuff underneath into my calculator. So 5 squared minus 4 times 4 times 2. I can plug that into my calculator exactly like I see it. So in my calculator, in parentheses, 5 squared, what is here is my squared, minus 4, in parentheses 4, in parentheses 2, exactly like I see it. And we get negative 7. So one more time, in parentheses 5 squared, minus 4, in parentheses 4, in parentheses 2, and we get negative 7. So we get negative 5 plus or minus the square root of that stuff. That stuff was negative 7 all over 2 times 4, which is 8. So I note if we had to simplify the square root of negative 7, we know negative 7 is negative 1, which is our special case, times negative 7. 
or sorry, negative one times positive seven. Oops. So the square root of negative one is going to come out as i, and that poor little lonely seven has to stay underneath the square root. So you have negative five plus or minus i square root of seven all over eight. So it's going to want, want us to write our answer using a comma separated list. So negative five plus i square root of seven all over eight, comma, negative five minus i square root of seven all over eight. And this is exactly how you plug it into your homework. All right, let's do another one on the next page. So solve by using the quadratic formula. 4k squared minus k minus 8 equals 0. This is in standard form already for us of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Standard form. So because it's in standard form, I can go ahead and find a, b, and c. So a in front of k squared is positive 4. b in front of k is negative 1. c out by itself is negative 8. So I can plug a, b, and c into our quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Again, wherever I see an a, I want to plug in 4. Wherever I see a b, I want to plug in negative 1. Wherever I see a c, I want to plug in negative 8. So negative b, which is negative 1, plus or minus the square root of b, which is negative 1 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is negative 8, all over 2 times a, which is 4. So we have negative, negative 1. Two negatives make a positive, so positive 1, plus or minus the square root of that stuff. Remember, just like we said on the last problem, I can plug this stuff underneath the radical into my calculator. Do not include the radical because that will give you ugly decimal. We can plug this into our calculator. So in parentheses, negative 1 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 8. Make sure you use this as your negative. Equals 129. So one more time, I plug this into my calculator. In parentheses, negative 1, close my parentheses, squared minus 4 in parentheses 4 times in parentheses negative 8 equals 129. So I have 1 plus or minus the square root of 129 all over 2 times 4, which is 8. Side note, if we were to simplify the square root of 129, um, 129 is 3 times 43 which 3 can't be broken down any further. 43 can't be broken down any further. There's no 2 of a kind, so it cannot be simplified. We tried, though. So that's our answer. I have 1 plus the square root of 129 divided by 8, comma 1 minus the square root of 129 divided by 8. Done. Let's do this next one. It says solve for 8 by using any method. If you have multiple solutions, then list the comma, uh, list them separated by commas. So this is in the quadratic equation section, so let's use the quadratic formula. If we have 9x squared plus 18x equals negative 1, or equals negative, let me start over. 9x squared plus 18x equals negative 11. This is not in standard form, so it's not set equal to 0. So let's put it into standard form first. So let's bring that 11 over. So let's add 11 to both sides. So we get 9x squared plus 18x plus 11 equals 0. So now this is in standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So a in front of x squared is positive 9. b in front of x is positive 18. c out by itself is positive 11. So let's plug this into our quadratic formula. So over here, our quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac 
all over 2a. So I have negative b, which is negative 18, plus or minus the square root of b, which is 18 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 9, times c, which is 11, all over 2 times a, which is 9. All right, like before, let's plug this stuff underneath the square root into our calculator. All right, so we have negative 18 plus or minus the square root. Plugging that stuff, don't plug in the square root because it's going to be ugly decimal. Plugging the stuff underneath into your calculator. So in parentheses, 18 squared minus 4 in parentheses times 9 times 11 in parentheses equals negative 72. Negative 72. So I have the square root of negative 72 all over 2 times 9, which is 18. All right, side note, let's simplify the square root of negative 72, which will give us negative 1 times 72. Negative 1 is our special case, so it gets circled. 72 is 3 times 36. Uh, 30, 72 is 2 times 36. Sorry. 36 is 2 and 18. 2 is done, it gets circled. 18 is 2 and 9. 2 is done, it gets circled. 9 is 3 and 3. 3s are done, so they get circled. So underneath the square root, we have our negative 1. I have 1, 2, 3, 3. I have 1, 2, 3, 2s. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Square root of negative 1 is our special case. That's coming out as i. It's the square root, so we're looking for two of a kind. So those two twos are coming out. Those two threes are coming out. And that poor little lonely two is left by itself underneath the radical. So you see how everything's important in this class because this stuff just keeps coming up. So simplifying radicals from test two. So I have i times two times three, which is six i, square root of two. So I have negative 18 plus or minus six i, square root of two, all over 18. So before we go further, we always want to simplify as far as we can. So if you just look at negative 18, 6 and 18, those are all numbers outside of radicals, so those are all like terms. Those all have a 6 in common, so I can factor or divide out a 6 from all of those terms. And that'll leave us with negative 18 divided by 6, which would be negative 3, plus or minus 6 divided by 6, which is 1i square root of 2, divided by 18 square root of 6, which is 3. So the 2 was left underneath the radical, so it's not a like term. So even though the i is there, these are all just whole numbers. So I could simplify those. So here's our answer. Let's just write it in the correct form because our... Uh, the directions say list them separated by commas. So negative 3 plus i square root of 2 all over 3, comma negative 3 minus i square root of 2 all over 3. And those, that's our final answer. All right, last page. Last two sections for this whole packet. So solve the equation x squared minus 2x plus 13 equals 0. Thankfully, it is in standard form for us. So ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So that's already done. So a, inside, a in front of x squared is positive 1. B in front of x is negative 2. C out by itself is positive 13. So let's go ahead and plug this into our quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I have negative b, so negative, negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b, which is negative 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 13, all over 
2 times a, which is 1. So negative, negative 2, those two negatives become a positive, plus or minus the square root. Plugging the stuff underneath the square root into our calculator, exactly like we see it. So we have in parentheses negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13, and that will give us negative 48. So 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 48 all over 2 times 1, which is 2. So side note, let's simplify. The square root of negative 48 we have negative 1 times 48. Negative 1 is a special case. It gets circled. 48 is 2 times 24. 2 is done. It gets circled. 24 is 2 and 12. 2 is done. It gets circled. 12 is 2 and 6. 2 is done. It gets circled. 6 is 2 and 3. So underneath the square root, we have negative 1 times 1, 2, 3, 4 twos, and then a 3. So square root of negative 1 is our special case. That's going to come out as i. It's the square root, so we're looking for two of a kind. So those two twos are going to come out. These two twos are going to come out. And that poor little lonely 3 is left by itself underneath the radical. So out front, we have i times 2 times 2, which is 4i square root of 3. So we have 2 plus or minus 4i square root of 3 all over 2. So just like we did on the last problem, these numbers out front are just whole numbers. So these are terms that I can uh, simplify. So 2, 4, and 2 all have a 2 in common. So let's factor or divide out a 2 from all of those. And that will leave us with 2 divided by 2 is 1, plus or minus 4 divided by 2, which is 2, i square root of 3, all over 2 divided by 2 is 1. I don't need to write that over 1. So it's just 1 plus or minus 2i square root of 3. And then last but not least, let's just write it as two separate answers separated by commas. So 2 plus, I'm sorry, 1 plus 2i square root of 3, comma 1 minus 2i square root of 3. And that's our answer. Last one, last one. All right, so solve. Uh, by the quadratic formula, list the solutions separated by commas. So 3x squared equals 10x plus 25. This is not in standard form. It's not set equal to zero. So let's do that first. Let's move the 10x and the 25 over. It doesn't matter which side you move it to. You can also move the 3x squared over if you want. But let's just move that 10x over to the other side by subtracting 10x. Let's also subtract 25 from both sides. Move that over as well. So that means we're left over with 3x squared minus 10x minus 25 equals 0. So now this is in standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So now we can see a in front of x squared is positive 3, b in front of x is negative 10, c out by itself is negative 25. So we can plug a, b, and c into our quadratic formula. Our quadratic formula says x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So wherever I see an a, I'm going to plug in 3. Wherever I see a b, I'm going to plug in negative 10. Wherever I see a c, I'm going to plug in negative 25. So negative b, which is negative 10, plus or minus the square root of b, which is negative 10 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 25, all over 2 times a, which is 3. Negative, negative 10 is positive 10, plus or minus the square root. Let's plug that stuff into our calculator exactly like we see it. In parentheses, negative 10 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 25 which will give us 400 all over 2 times 3, which is 6. The square root of 400, while we're using our calculator, is a perfect square. So the square root of 400 is 20. So I can go ahead and say, okay, that's 10 plus or minus 20. 
all over 6. So that means we have 10 plus 20 all over 6. And we have 10 minus 20 all over 6. 10 plus 20 would give us 30. 30 divided by 6 would give us 5. So one answer is 5. So I was able to simplify this fully. 10 minus 20 would give us negative 10 divided by 6. So negative 10 over 6 could be simplified because they both have a 2 in common. So factoring or dividing out 2 from the top and the bottom, we're left with negative 5 thirds. So 5 and negative 5 thirds are our final answers. So that is all of module 6 homework 4 notes. And that's all of our test three notes packet. If you have any questions, please let us know. If not, you can go ahead now and complete your module six homework for homework assignment. Thank you for watching. Good luck on test three.